All right, then uh, welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question, blank space. You are given a binary array A of n elements. A binary array is an array consisting of zeros and ones. Fine. A blank space is a segment of consecutive elements consisting of only zeros. Fine. Your task is to find the length of longest blank space. Okay. So basically a blank space is defined as a run of zeros and we have to find the length of longest blank space. Now this is a simple implementation based question. So let us see the input output. Uh, first line is the t test cases, then each test case we have a single integer n and the second line of each test case consists of n space separated integers, the element of the array. So we just have a binary array uh, which is only zeros and ones present here. And what we are supposed to find is we are supposed to find the run of longest, like we are supposed to find the longest run of zeros. Right, so this is a very easy question. I will not waste your time here. Uh, the learning that you can gain, gain from here is like, frankly, this explains why it's a div 4 question. So it can be solved in variety of ways. Uh, but let's just see in which manner I actually solved it. Okay, it can be solved in variety of ways. What you can do is uh, basically you can just uh, keep track of how many zeros are there. And whenever one encounters, you can update the longest run. Right, so what I can do is, uh, I can just keep track of how many zeros are there and whenever one encounters, I can just update the maximum uh, length of blank space, right. So if one is encountered, I know that uh, uh, as soon as one is encountered, I can just make sure uh, what was the previous run of zeros and I can update the blank space. If this one is encountered, I know there is a previous run of three zeros and update the maximum blank space, right. So that's that uh, and uh, yeah, let's just solve this question quickly. I don't want to waste your time here. So int n c in n and then uh, array, right? So area of n where int i equals to zero ls then n i plus plus c in area of i. So we have taken the input and the, area, the it's a binary input, right? So what I'll do is I'll initialize the answer to zero. So I'll assume that initially the maximum round of ones is zero. Then I'll initialize this variable z count. So what this keeps track is what are the maximum number of zeros right now that I've seen. Okay, maximum number of zeros I have seen till now. This makes sure it's max zeros seen till now. Okay, that's what it keeps track of. And I'll go through the entire array i less than n i plus plus. If array of i is zero, if area of i is zero. What I can do is I can just increment count plus plus else. Now area of i is not zero, basically definitely it will be one. Area of i is one. So what I can do is I can just uh, update my answer to max of max of zero count, no, max of zero count and answer, right? So initially answer was zero anyway. So yeah, and I can reset the zero count to be again zero, right? So basically, uh, let's say I saw this three zeros and when this one was encountered, I updated my answer to three and then I reset at the zero count, right? And from this part again, the zero count will increase and at this one, I'll, update, I'll again try to update the answer. If there was, let's say one more zero, at this point it will make the, it will make the maximum round of ones to be four, right? Cool. There's just one last uh, thing uh, we need to check. So basically this code works, but there's one thing that we forgot. Uh, that we forgot is uh, what if one never comes if there is something like this. So we'll just keep incrementing the count to four. And if one doesn't come, uh, the answer won't be updated the last time. So we just need to update answer one more time. And uh, yeah, that's that. You need to update the answer one more time because this might be there, right? this case might be there. If this case doesn't occur anyway, uh, the, zero, the zero count basically is zero count will be resetted and anyway, the answer won't change from whatever it is. Right, so this one last thing we need to do. So this is what beginners usually forget and scratch their head. So why this is required is if the last guy was zero. If it is confusing to you, uh, maybe uh, you can actually make a check here. If array of n minus one is zero, then only update the answer, right? Or whatever works, both of them works. And we can just print the answer followed by a new line. Cool. Okay. So maybe this should be zero count, right? So the verifying the answers would be difficult here uh, for simple reason that we can just see, right? So here the answer should be two. 
here the answer should be 1, here the answer should be 0, and here the answer should be 3. Right? So again, I'll just repeat the logic very simply. I'm just keeping track of how many zeros I've seen till now. And whenever one is encountered, I'm just updating my answer. I just need to make sure, just need to make sure if 0 was the last element, the answer would have, wouldn't have been updated. If 0 was the last element here, if 0 was the last element here, the answer wouldn't have been updated. That's why I need to update it one more time. Right? One last time. And that's that. Uh, let me just quickly submit this code and see if everything works. Right? So let me just quickly submit it. It should work. I think uh, there's not much to this question. The constraints were pretty less, so I am sure uh, taking an integer wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.